Everybody, Pookie TVX. Wanted to talk about a little personal story that's going on in my life, you know, and if it's and if it can help another kid or a parent to see the signs of a kid, then it's all for it, man. All for it. So a little background story. I was born in Oakland, California, born and raised. I moved to Washington State for a while and kept going back and forth. I had kids early. My first son I had was at 17. And he will be 19 this month. I was heavy into the streets, like real heavy into the streets. Like that's all I would do. At a young age, I was in it. I was thinking that was the only way to live. Not knowing the consequences from living that life. Because when you born into it, it's like a transition. It's just like it, it's just like that's the way it's supposed to be, and it's not. I don't glorify it, and I regret it. But it's life, you know. You live and you learn. So I was with my kids, but I really wasn't with my kids. My mind wasn't in it. I was physically there, but my mind was in the streets. So, my youngest, my uh, middle son, moved with my mom to South Carolina because she went out there to take care of her dad. She ends up passing away. My son moves back with me, stays with me for about two years. And the other kids are with their mom. I get a job opportunity in, um, in Oakland. So I moved to Oakland because my son wanted to stay there until he could finish school. So he stayed with my auntie while I came out here, you know, to get situated. He was a star football player. Good in almost every sport. He's an artist. He can draw. He can draw so damn good. It's ridiculous. So he's standing with my auntie. He hangs out with these wrong kids. The wrong kids that he shouldn't have even been hanging out with. And he get led down a path that put him in the situation that he's in now. First, it started off at little stuff as um, fights at school, um, running away, stuff like that. And then one day, I look on the news and I see his face. And I turn it up and they said they're looking for him. He's armed and dangerous. So he calls me. And I talk to him on the phone and talk him into um, turning himself in so he don't get shot out there in them damn streets. Because me, I know how it is. So I talk him into turning himself in. He turns himself in. 
Okay, now the charges that he go in with is um, it was okay. Now it's him and three other white people, three other white kids. The charges they go in with is um, murder and attempted murder and a robbery. And this is when he's 16 years old. He's been fighting with this for so long, for the last year and a half, he's been fighting this. His attorney came and said, everybody's pointing the finger at him and your son won't talk. He won't say anything. So everybody's pointing the finger at him. The best deal we can get is 20 years. Mind you, he had his part in it. He should have to deal with the consequences. But 20 years when he's not the killer. But the kid that actually did it gets 10 years. So they're trying to railroad him. To any parent that's out there, watch who your kid is around. If you see any signs of him straying off or doing something you're not supposed to, check it out. Check it out. Snatch his phone, go through his, go through everything. Because this situation can happen. In a matter of in a matter of days, he went from a star football player to facing twenty years in prison at sixteen. To any kid out there trying to get into this street life, don't do it. It's not worth it. The people that you think are your friends aren't your friends. The street that you out there banging for and doing all this shit for and putting all your love in the streets, you ain't going to get it back. Either you're going to go to jail or you're going to die. And when you in jail, your best friend going to be with your girl. And you ain't going to get no love. No letters. No commissary. Nothing. You're going to be just asked out. Regretting. Wishing. You would have made different choices. My mom told me when I was in the streets that um, when I had my child, she said, he's going to be 10 times to 100 times worse than you are. I didn't know what she mean when she said that, but now I see it was my karma coming back around. That's something I have to deal with. That's the mistakes I made as a parent. I wasn't there like I should have been. This happens to any type of kid that that wants to be accepted. So they think they have to do all this crazy stuff to be part of it. Not being a leader, being a follower. And at this point, following behind me what I was doing because they seen a lot with me. And I take full responsibility for that. Full responsibility. You never know what life will deal you. To all the kids out there that's thinking about doing what you don't do it. It's no 401k. It's no health benefits. 
There's no paid vacation. The streets is full of pain, agony, hardship. Your family suffer. Everybody suffer. The people that you're doing your criminal activities to are suffering. And at the end, you're going to be suffering. Facts. So to anybody out there that's dealing with a situation like this or trying to avoid a situation like this, even if you don't like the video, you don't want to subscribe, just share the video. Let some kid get the message or some parent get the message and know that this life is for real. This is not no internet situation. It's real life. And it can happen. Trust me, it happened. So to anyone out there, pay attention. Watch the signs. Get involved in your kid's life. Don't just hand them a tablet or a phone and just let them do what they're doing. With all this shit going on, ain't no telling what's going on. To any kid out there, man, watch what you're doing. Live a productive life. A crime-free life. Because once them people get you, it's a wrap. You're a slave to the system. And it's hard to get off. Y'all stay blessed. And safe and watch out for your kids. Make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Love.